Looking at I Love Trouble in our first segment got us thinking about cancellations, about those comics that, rightly or wrongly, have dropped off the shelves. And no matter how justified the cancellation, there will always be die-hard fans who are just gutted that their favourite series has bitten the dust. Sometimes it seems like the only possible choice due to poor sales or lack of interest, but sometimes it's really inexplicable. As in the case of Superman Unchained. I never thought I'd see the day when a Scott Snyder series would be edged out after only nine issues. Well, the first arc was only ever going to be nine, but yeah, I am surprised that it wasn't held over as a series. <laughs> but mind you, DC do seem to have been cleaning house lately, with Nightwing, Suicide Squad, JLA and Teen Titans all showing up on the casualty list. For me though, the most painful loss in the DC stable has to be Dial H, written by China Mayville with Albert Ponticelli, David Lapham and Mattias Santaluccio all passing through as artists. It has to be said though, although I was really sad to see Dial H get the axe, I wasn't that surprised. Yeah, look, sales were never that spectacular, and I also think that one of its greatest strengths mm -hmm. was also one of its greatest weaknesses. Yeah. I mean, this was a new 52 title, but it never really hooked into the larger DC universe. I mean, it had its own vast, multiverse spanning story to tell, and it just didn't play well with others. That's true, and I don't think the lead characters really helped. You have Nelson Gent, an overweight slacker who discovers a phone dial that transforms him into random and often hilariously named superheroes. You also have his partner Roxy, who is awesome, but is also middle-aged and ticks none of the usual boxes for comic heroines. Again, I think that's one of the reasons why this series was so great, but it could also be the reason it didn't quite hook into that market. Oh well. C'est la vie. Yes, now sticking with DC for just a little longer, we come to a series that wasn't cancelled but has been on an extended hiatus. Batman The Widening Gaia, written by Kevin Smith with art by Walter Flanagan. Now, not to put it too bluntly, but this is one of the worst Batman stories I've ever read and I hope it's gone forever. Well, I really hope I'm not around when you decide to be blunt. Yeah, I know, I know, but honestly, this book got thrown across the room <laughs> more than once before I finished reading it. Alright, well, let's set the scene a little before you start tearing it apart. Widening Gaia follows on from the Cacophony miniseries, which was a New York Times bestseller and revolved around the Smith-created villain Onomatopoeia. Widening Gaia focuses on two characters showing up in Gotham. Bruce's ex-girlfriend, Silver St. Cloud, and a brand new crime fighter calling himself Baphomet. See, I quite liked Cacophony, yeah. so I was honestly surprised to see what a poorly plotted mess Widening Guy turned out to be, just cobbled together out of disconnected action scenes and pure old humour. Yeah, I can't disagree with you on that. Nothing about this book worked, and its approach to some of the characters was painful. Catwoman is reduced to a clingy stalker, and the Dark Knight himself comes across as more or less an idiot, taking Baphomet into his full trust after only a couple of weeks and one hug in the rain. Now, since it's set in pre-New 52 continuity, there's no real deadline for when this story can come out. Yeah. It was supposed to come out by the end of last year. Yeah. I'm praying it never, ever does. <laughs> okay, moving swiftly in a more positive direction, we come to Battle Chasers, a critically acclaimed series created by Joe Maduera that began under the Wildstorm imprint in 1998. Battle Chasers ran for nine issues over four years and ended on quite a cliffhanger, which has never been resolved, mainly due to the fact that its creator left the world of comics for the world of gaming. Yes, making them, yes. not just playing them, yeah. he's not just sitting on his couch. No. Now, Battle Chasers was a great series that I know a lot of people would be really happy to see return. Set in a world where magic and science coexist, it follows Gully, a nine-year-old girl who wields a pair of magic gloves belonging to her missing father, as she goes on a quest to stop four powerful bad guys that have escaped from prison. If it returns, it may well be under a different creative mm. team, but one can always hope. Finally, we come to one of the more recent Image titles to have gone AWOL. Where is Jake Ellis? Written by Nathan Edmondson with art by Tonchi Zonyuk. Now you may remember that we took a look at the previous five part series, Who is Jake Ellis? Mm. And we're big fans. Absolutely, mm. just a breakneck spy thriller with a sci-fi twist that had me hooked from its very first perplexing pages. John Moore is a former CIA analyst on the run from a lot of very dangerous people and assisted only by one man named Jake Ellis that no one else can see. Once John has figured out who Jake Ellis is in the first series, well, 
more or less. More or less. He has to figure out where he is in the second one. Now, unfortunately, only the first three issues of this series have been released, with the last one being released in March last year. Yeah. This was concerning, so much so that we reached out to the writer Nathan Edmondson just to see what was going on. Now, Mr. Edmondson has assured us Jake Ellis will return as soon as possible. He was also kind enough to send us this preview page from the next issue. Feast them eyes. And the Jake Ellis title has also been picked up by Fox for adaptation into film, with David Yates to direct. So that is crazily exciting too. Absolutely mm. it is. I guess the lesson here is never jump to conclusions. Even if your favourite series has been off the shelves for more than a year, it might just be sleeping.